Hello to everyone out there watching and listening. Um, they're still having major problems over there in the Philippine area. I've stuck it right there where we can start off. And they're having a few problems over here in the area right down here. I tried to get this about 3.0 for the last couple days. And you can just see another swath here. I remember a few days ago we had Vanatow and they had a, a swath the same way. Just one after the other, you know, they pile up. They call them aftershocks, whatever they want to call them. They're, everything's still shaking and vibrating. Uh, to me, it's just another earthquake, just smaller. You can see we got a plenty all over if you go 3.0 or greater. Over here in Japan, their area, they don't look to be having too much of a problem at the moment. Let's hope into March the situation doesn't end up changing. Right now, I'm not seeing any reason why it should drastically, but things change quickly, don't they? One day things will seem calm, and then some other part of the world are not where you're not at. This thing can change real quick, because that's a lot, a lot of stuff going on over there in that part of the earthquake zone. Come back around to our area. You don't see too much of a big magnitude up along this line yet. see a bunch of threes, you know, three ranges here. We got a recent four and a half, it looks like, right in this region in here. And then over here in the central region, where Oklahoma is located, we got a 3-3, three, three, so we made it on to the earthquake list in the threes. We had been in the twos. Well, let's go ahead and we will check A little bit of the damage. You see it just destroyed some roads. We know what pictures of Japan look like. But these pictures here may not be tsunamiized. but it gives you an indication of uh, how you get broken up and being able to go someplace. Maybe that road might have been the only way these people had to get in and out. So they're having a real tough time of it over there. All my prayers go out to them. I couldn't understand what that would even feel like. And then you can see them carrying already um, one of their deceased. I believe the reports that I read were 22 deceased so far. And then you can see the anguish and the pain of the realization of what has happened and the losses that have occurred for not only themselves but everyone else. But we really don't know what it's like when you get right down to it. We might have had our share of fives here in the last several months, but 
what we got was nothing compared to what the Japanese people or the Haitians or the Chileans or the New Zealand or the Indonesians in 04 or the Philippines we have not experienced anything like that and there's just more devastation you know people don't live exactly the way we do in the portions of the islands and stuff over there they're still structures that are not concrete and steel and well that stuff falls and buckles too anyway doesn't it but they need our prayers and they're gonna need some help because they're not stopping it looks like they're just continuing this lower magnitude Now when we come over here to the list, you can see the four and a half was in Mexico, in that region. And there's your Indonesia with your low 5-1. Nevada made it with 3-4. You're getting into the Kermadec Islands in the New Zealand region we looked at, 5-3. More Philippines, 4-9-5-2. California hit it with a 3-4, tied Nevada. We're going to drop back a few hours and go backwards. And you see a 4.9 in the Svalbard region. 4.6, Mexico. Philippines again, 5. Philippines, 5.3. The Honduras, 4.5. The Bonda Sea, 4.5. The Philippines once again, 4.6. East Coast Honshu, Japan, 4-8. Hokkaido, Japan region, 5-0. Cebu region, Philippines, 4-9. Coast of Bio, Bio Chile, 4.9. The Gulf of Aden, 4.9. The Philippines again, 4.9. Peru, Ecuador border, that region, 4.8. In the Indonesia area, Sulawesi, 4.6. So I never also, well, to end up with the earthquakes. This is how it sits right now, going into the day. So let's pray for everybody over there. Hopefully we won't get anything over here at the moment. Possibly later. We'll have to see anything strikes any time, doesn't it? Well, I never did find where that fireball, or whatever it was, the other night landed. I never could find anything that, that actually said it went somewhere and somebody went and looked and this is where they found it and but while I was looking this one just caught my eye and it is an older article but it says it was published and it's got space.com on it a lot of people like space.com so we'll see what they what did they say five years ago if nobody's read the article Well, they're talking about uh, the explosion in Tunguska. That's where they started it out. And what could have caused that and everything. And so they talk about a relatively small asteroid could still cause such a big, giant explosion. We should be making more efforts at detecting the smaller ones, blah, blah, blah. Well, we know that they've mapped a lot of them and everything. We've already had them come out and tell us that the the day's safe and they know where everything's at and we're not going to get hit 
But still, they calculated the Tunguska explosion roughly as strong as 10 to 20 megatons of TNT. A thousand times more powerful than the A-bomb on Hiroshima. And that's a powerful blast. Very. And then you have these wild theories. And I read another guy and he said it was a UFO that crashed into a asteroid or a meteor or something to save the Earth. And see, they mentioned in the last decade they've conjectured it was an asteroid exploding in the Earth's atmosphere. It was roughly 100 feet wide, 560,000 metric tons in mass, more than 10 times that of the Titanic. And it's thought to have blown up above the surface, which is fragments hitting the ground. Now they have their new supercomputer simulations suggest that the asteroid that caused the extensive damage was much smaller than they thought. And the simulations run on the Red Storm supercomputer, the third fastest in the world, detail how an asteroid that explodes as it runs into the atmosphere will generate a supersonic jet of expanding superheated gas. This fireball would have caused blast waves that were stronger at the surface than previously thought. At the same time, previous estimates seem to have overstated the devastation the event caused. All in all, the researchers suggest that smaller asteroids may pose a greater danger than previously believed. And there's a lot of littler ones. Moreover, there are a lot more objects in size. NASA Ames Research Center planetary scientist and astrobiologist David Morrison, who did not participate in this study, said, if he's right, we can expect more Tunguska-sized explosions perhaps every couple of centuries instead of every millennia or two. He added it raises the bar in the long term. Ultimately we'd like to have a survey system that can detect things. And they claim they've got a survey system. Boss Lowe and his colleagues detailed their findings on December 11, back then. Paper on the phenomenon has been accepted for publication. So, the little ones can do things too, can't they? And we're going to go back up here. And there he is. There's the illustrious one. Pull that video out. It's being blown all over the TV of whenever he says if he gets three years and he can't get it done then he'd have the proposition of being a one-term president. Flash forward to current time and now he says he deserves another term. We should get another term. Well, I disagree. But they're going to put him back in. The people that yank the strings think he is doing a fine job. The poll already indicates that if he ran against Romney, he'd beat him. And he can't actually believe any of the other candidates if the vote was really the vote would actually win against an incumbent. He should be able to be defeated if the playing field was level and fair and true. But we all know it's not. So Mr. Obama 
is also recently spoken on some different things. And he just said that he doesn't believe Israel's decided whether to attack Iran. And he hopefully thinks they can solve this diplomatically. The Israelis, now, they said this, you know, in the past year, two years, whatever, about not wanting them to be able to get nuclear capabilities. Because they know they want to wipe them out. I mean, that can't be all made up conjecture. Because we know there's going to be big war over there. And when you got some of the other Arab neighbors that fear what Iran would do, I mean, you might be talking about Saudi Arabia buying all those weapons so they can play double-edged sword, protect themselves, or be an aggressor somewhere else, or still have something to defend against Iran if Iran were to become nuclear armed. So you hear the talk about the peace treaty, potential for that over there, is supposedly running out of time. So, timing is everything. The peace treaty has a time. War is going to have a time. And what has diplomacy done since he has been in office? It has allowed Iran to have more time to continue what they began and you know, things have been done already to try and delay big time what they've been trying to do. I mean, you've had mysterious explosions over there at sites. Uh, you had the magnet put on the scientist car that blew him up. You had the computer virus that held him up. Well, you've seen these covert things already going on. So, either they are doing it, and they're really trying to stop them without it getting blown way out and becoming huge. Or, they're just pestering them, trying to get them to do something. But if they don't have any nukes, what would they do? I mean, Israel has them, so it'd be no fight. I believe he also was talking about Mr. Assad in Syria. And I believe he said it wasn't a question of if or anything like that. He was going to go, but it was a question of when. Now, they've already had China and Russia not get on board. Well, it looks like they're going to have a little coalition of the willing. Well, Roundup like before, you know, with Great Britain and France and ooh, a couple others might jump in. But you know, he he's not going to go like the others went. He's not going to let them roll on in there with their force. They're going to have to go in on the ground. He's not going to give up. Or they'll have to drone him. Because if this guy here is doing the same thing he's done before, I mean, come on, you know, U.S. was, even though, like I've told you before, he was a, a dictator in the Middle East, Hasim Mubarak, but uh, 
can't say he was a good dictator, but he was a moderate, however you would term it, that held back all these other elements that were even worse than he was. You know, he held all this other stuff away. And they got rid of him because of that. And they have just proceeded to go and get rid of whoever they want and put in who they want put in to bring about what they want. Well, nobody actually <clears throat> has said when when is enough is enough. You just have to look at the map and see who's leading the country and what what is the situation there and, and then you'll know where they're going. And they're they're not done by far. So it's not a question, just like he said, of if we're going to do it, they're going to do it. It's probably going to be timed almost with some other events that they're probably going to portray out. Other events brings to mind, apparently Romania's government has collapsed. Uh, and they've had a bunch of protests over there too about the austerity measures. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but if they started cutting uh, wages and pensions, I don't think that people really get on board with that. Because when you're talking about salary cuts, higher taxes, and then in some cases pension reduction contributions and will pay out or whatever, well they just put the big squeeze on you then. If things weren't bad enough, then they did it to you even worse by doing that. And now, when we get back to Egypt, not that Obama had anything to do with this, but he'll he'll get his, his self in it. You've got these uh, Americans that are going to go on trial in Egypt, apparently. And the U.S. tried to threaten the old money bags by cutting off the financial aid. So I'm only bringing this up because you ought to be able to read it like a book by now on how, it, how it's going over there, for real. Mubarak got took out. And now what's happening over there is exactly what everybody knew would happen. Hardline stuff coming in behind him, worse than what he was. And now you see, well, straining, the ties are straining now between the Egypt-U.S. relationship. So this guy here ain't done nothing but screw things up, but it's not really a screw up because it's what he wants to do. It's what he it's what he's there for. It's part of the new world order. Reshape things. Break them up into bits and then reform everything the way you want it. Order out of chaos. So the old world and all its people sure do need some prayers because what we get over here in the Western media about what's going on way over there and we've only got so many sources to look at and we have to look at more than one to verify so it's just probably like that over there they can't get real good stuff about us all the time because they're over there so not everything is 
said the same way. You think the internet connects everything, but things are viewed differently through the eyes of others throughout the world, whatever the situation and location may be. But we all need the prayers. So let's keep praying for one another because there's strength in numbers. I'm going to let everybody go. This has got kind of, well, not real long, but a little bit long. And I'll speak to y'all real soon. Hump day tomorrow. At least we're closer to Friday, eh? So y'all be good. Watch out. Be safe. We made it through the earthquake drill. I didn't hear of anything happening other than we had a 3-3 on the day they had it. So that's a plus. It's a good thing. Glad everybody was aware. I'm glad I found that article so I knew about it. So good night, good morning, whatever it may be for everyone. Hello, if you're just coming on and goodbye since I have to go. I'll speak to you soon. God bless.